Good morning. How are you all on this wonderful, it's beautiful day outside if you're in New Jersey. Um, so it's a gorgeous day and I want to thank you all for being here. And what else? I hope you had a good weekend. I'm, I'm wishing that all of these, um, videos are doing, serving people well. I'm getting a lot of good responses. I'm actually very happy that they're on YouTube because um, they're easier to find that way. You know, they're uh, all in one space. Uh, eventually, I'd like to go on to Zoom, so I'm working on that. And um, good morning, who is here? Hi, Irma. Good morning. So I can only see the screen when um, I'm not teaching. So this morning I wanted to talk about uh, the Joint Freeing series. And if any of you know me and a lot of people I've had work with me privately, they know the Joint Freeing series. And my classes, everybody knows the Joint Freeing series. Hi Lynn, I see people coming in. Good morning. So today's about the Joint Freeing series and feeling stretch and strength. And um, just a little side note, I was watching, um, I'm watching a, uh, a conference online through the Shift Network, and yesterday they had this uh, gentleman on, and he was talking about how people in yoga move too fast, and everything I talk about, so I'm going to pursue him further, uh, the practice he gave, and very much into the spiritual aspect, he actually said what my teacher says, so I teach from this book, structural yoga therapy and I was asked by my teacher who wrote the book to teach from this book and his um, his wife his partner he's since passed and this is what I teach the basis of my teaching so if people come to my classes and they're not um, it's not what they're used to the alignment that's fine but um, as the gentleman said yesterday I was watching on the conference the hardest people to teach are people who know everything. So I agree with that. And I am going to look into how he teaches a lot of the movement coming from the core and feeling the muscles and moving from the center of the body. In this, in structural yoga therapy, we learn to feel the muscles and not the joints. His practice goes a little deeper and um, it's different and I think it's always good to learn different things. I love this practice. It's, it's created for individuals and in a group setting we teach everybody to be safe and comfortable which is what I'm teaching everybody here on these online classes. I do the same in my group classes. So that's one of the most important things that I feel that you should all do is to feel, you know, safe and comfortable. When we move slower, like the gentleman was talking about yesterday, I haven't researched him enough, so I kind of forgot his name, but I have it written down, so I'll remember. You know, um, feeling, and that's the main purpose of why I teach yoga, because as this conference I'm watching is about, we hold a lot of our emotions, we hold all our emotions in our tissue, and if we have negative emotions stuck in tissue, we're gonna have pain, discomfort, tightness, quirkiness, whatever you'd like to call it. And when we learn to move in a easeful manner, we're able to relax and release. So that's why I say to everybody, relax in the postures. We're going to be working on that tomorrow. So that's an interesting concept to grasp. So relaxing in the postures. So again, a lot of you know that I teach from this book. I was trained by Mukunda Stiles, one of my master teachers. I love him. He's with us here in spirit today. And um, yeah, I want to work with joint freeing series it's a very simple series but as many of my students know who have done the series and do the practice it's not very easy 
In the practice, we learn to free our joints, which means we're going to engage muscles. We're not going to grip and squeeze like this. We're going to feel gentle engagement. So as I tell my students, if we're always doing this, 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 we're always strengthening and we don't release to extend and then use the full range of motion. You're only strengthening the belly, say, of the arm muscle. You're not strengthening where it um, originates and where it inserts. There's two points of a muscle. So a lot of times bodybuilders, you'll see they're like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and they're only strengthening, say, the belly of this muscle. This is an easy muscle to show you this morning. So I'm really excited to teach this, and it's the basis for all teachings. I also want to let you know that after we do the joint freeing series in structural yoga, that we move on to something called the 24 asanas, which are the asanas that you all know, warrior pose, warrior two, um, all the different poses uh, that we go through. And what they incorporate is the initial alignment of what we're gonna learn today. So be prepared to have fun right? We're going to have fun today. And um, if you have any reservations about doing something, just give yourself back off of it a little bit and slow down. And the most important thing, the most important thing, I'm Italian, can you tell? The most important thing is that you have to keep your breath slow, fluid, and moving. Now, if you have a hard time breathing with the movement as I'm going to instruct you all to do. Just make sure you're moving slowly. Moving slowly and feeling is the key to structural yoga therapy. And the catchphrase is adapting to the individual. So I do work privately. I am doing some private Zoom um, practices with people if you'd like to sign up for one of those contact me either by however you um, can get in touch with me if you're not sure how if you go to my website it says connect and that'll send an email directly to my email so my website is hooked up to it's pretty fancy no not really but anyway so let's get started it is 10.09. Okay, yeah, let's get started. And good morning to everybody. And I want to thank everybody who has so generously donated to these classes. They're keeping me going since I haven't worked in two months. And um, and if you, if you haven't worked, I hope you're doing these classes to keep you moving and strong. You know, I talked to some healthcare friends uh, yesterday and we're you know, we're used to being very physical all the time. I usually teach 10 classes a week. This is very unusual. So I do a practice at home and then I do the three, you know, when I'm off. I do take Saturday or Sunday off. But I do these with you um, three days a week and I want you to practice them as much as you feel comfortable. Okay, so thank you for being here and let's get started. So. We're going to start seated comfortable position this morning and the joint freeing series is done uh, basically on the floor seated so we will not be standing up today so sit up on something comfortable we're going to start with the breathing practice a little clock and you're just going to slowly watch your breath watch your inhale and your exhalation Let your belly be soft. That was one wonderful thing this gentleman talked about yesterday, how we hold our tummies in all the time. And they should be easeful. Inhale, ex inhale, expanding. Exhale, contracting. Because when you ex stretch and contract any muscle, it's going to strengthen. If you're always holding a muscle, it becomes very tight and very weak. Same goes for your rectus abdominis, your internal um, muscles of the abdomen, and even the lower back. 
So take some full deep breaths, relax the abdomen on your inhalation, breathing abdomen, rib cage, upper chest, relax your diaphragm, and exhale, upper chest, rib cage, abdomen contract. Tuck the navel center towards the spine. Nice full deep breaths. Let your shoulders relax. If you're not sure of the three part breath and you get confused, just make sure that the body expands on inhale and contracts on exhalation. So breathing fully and deeply. Feel the spine elongate. This is where you can really connect to feeling, are you relaxed? Sitting tall and erect. You can add a count to your inhale if you'd like. Evening inhale. So you might count om one, om two, om three, om four. Whatever you reach on the inhalation. Don't go past 10 though. And then make it equal to the Make the exhalation equal to your inhalation. Soften your jaw, draw your shoulders back and down. You might want to draw your elbows back. So you really open through the heart, taking in more breath. like to begin to double your exhalation, please feel free to do so. So you can inhale fully, relax the belly, relax your diaphragm, that's your large breathing muscle, so you want to relax that as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you just relax the upper chest as the air exits, relax the rib cage as the air moves out and the abdomen contracts, pelvic floor lifts gently. So gently engaging the pelvic floor. Then you need to relax the abdomen completely before you begin your inhalation. Continue this for a few more rounds of breath. Really squeezing all the air out. As you lengthen exhalations, they activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So they relax the body when you lengthen an exhalation. Relax your shoulders, soften your jaw, let the knees drop and relax. Keep the chin parallel to the floor, don't drop your chin. At the end of your next full exhalation, just slowly release the breath. Take a moment to notice how you feel. We're going to do some gentle stretch before we get into the full joint freeing series. So sit comfortable and just keep the spine long and circle your hips. Reach through the crown of the head. Keep the sit bones grounded and circle the opposite direction. Stay with your breath. 
Remember, the breath is the bridge between your mind and your body. And come on to center. Just drop your right hand, reach the left arm up. Just a gentle stretch over. Energy through your fingers. So my fingers are together. Where am I? Reach. Inhale, come on up. Sit tall. Exhale to the opposite side. Reach. Energy through the fingers. Open the ribs. Try not to draw the chest down. Open the heart. Hand is right next to your hip. It's not behind it or in front of it. It's a lateral hinge. So reach and lift up out of the pose. So you get a nice stretch. Come on up. Take a gentle twist to the right. Nice gentle twist. Lengthen the spine as you press the knees and the sit bones down. And inhale, come on through center when you're ready. And turning to the opposite direction. Turning left, nice deep breaths. And release, come on back to center. So if you're sitting up on something because you need to for your hips, that's perfectly fine. The one thing I'd like to say though is, if you sit up on something and your hips are here, and your knees are lower, you want to put something underneath the knees so they don't hyperextend. So if I was sitting up on this taller, not like, how about if I do it? Okay. So this is taller, but do you see how my knees are not touching the floor? So we want something to support them. So maybe roll a towel or something underneath like this. And that's only if you're sitting up on something. If you're not sitting on anything other than the floor or a small blanket, do not do this under your knees because then your knees will be higher than your hips, which is not what we want, okay? So, adjust yourself accordingly. Where to put my props this morning? It's all about the how it looks on camera. So, so the first movement of joint freeing series is taking our hands to Dandasana. Hands are wider than our shoulders and wider than our mat. So the reason we do this is to keep space between the shoulder joints. So hands wider, feet are flexed. And you're going to slowly Exhale as you point, inhale as you flex. Now make sure the feet stay even. You're pressing your palms away from the floor. Nice full deep breaths. Exhale as you point, inhale as you flex, spread the toes. Now you want to move from the ankles. What we're doing is we're strengthening the joint of the ankle. As we strengthen, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, we're strengthening the muscles that surround the joint. So as we strengthen this, we're stretching the antagonist muscle, the opposite muscle. So if it was your arm, you'd be strengthening this and stretching this. It's a natural feeling. So I'm teaching you how to discern what you feel. And again, safe, comfortable stretch. Exhaling as you point, inhale, spread the toes and flex. Again, if you can't stay with the breath, just do the movement very slow. Now make sure that you're feeling the strength as you come back and feeling the strength in the calf muscles as you point the toes. Nice full deep breaths. pushing away at the palms. You're not leaning. You're pushing away. Look at how long and strong your arm muscles become. Spread the fingers. Push away at the fingertips and come to center. Now we're going to separate the feet a little wider than the hips. We're going to bring the toes in so they almost touch. There we go. So, we're going to circle the ankles out and around. Now watch my knees and my thighs are not moving. So avoid moving your knees and your thighs. 
We're not moving the hips. When you move the legs, you're rotating the hips. We're only rotating the ankles. Go very slowly and feel the muscles strengthening. Relax the joints. Point as far as you can forward and bring them back as far as you can on the opposite movement. Shoulders are back, palms are extended, and release. Go the opposite direction. Move slow, move with the breath. Synchronize the movement with the breathing. That's why I was saying I watched this gentleman yesterday and it was like, yeah, he even said the breath should be, we should be breathing less, not more as we practice. We want long, smooth breaths. and come on to center. So the next movement we're gonna do, I'm just gonna clear my screen. They always have this little thing that pops up. I don't wanna see them. Where are you? There we go. The next movement we're gonna do is to bring the feet together. So let me show you in this direction. So the feet are 90 degrees. So that's really important. Feet are 90 degrees. You don't want them at an angle. Here they're not 90 degrees. When you bring them 90 degrees, you're able to engage these muscles. You're also stretching the calf muscle and strengthening these muscles. These are called your peroneus longus muscles. And they attach to your knees. So you want to be able to get a full range of motion in the full muscle. So I know for some of you, if this is new, this is a little technical, but you, knowing your body is really important. So you're going to bring the feet together, 90 degrees, and make sure they're flat, as if you were, they were walking on a floor. You don't want them like this where they're turned in. So make sure they're flat, ankles touch, and you're going to exhale as you bring the soles of the feet in. You'll feel a nice stretch through here, and this is strengthening, right, strengthening. And inhale, bring the ankles together. Feel like you're bringing your toes towards your knees. What you're doing is you're stretching the inner edge of the legs and stretching, I'm sorry, you're stretching the inner edge of the legs and strengthening the outer, okay? So knowing what you're doing while you're doing it is really important. So keep, continue, exhale. Keep them straight up, don't let them fall. Inhale. And look, if you can't make them touch, be in alignment. Don't worry about if they touch or not. Stay with your breath. Notice what you're feeling. It should be safe, comfortable movement. Shoulders are back, heart is lifted. I'm trying to unwrinkle my shirt. And come on through center. Good. So, separate the feet. And you should be able to start to discern and feel your muscles now. So the next movement we do, I, I teach it in two forms. It's to strengthen your hip flexors. And as a lot of my students know, I know my head's not in the shop, but I want to show you the hip flexors. Hip flexors, so important. They're what brings your leg up, right? strengthening you want to feel these muscles in here so this movement is one of my all-time favorites for strengthening those um, I do it just so I make sure they're still working because um, I don't know about you but we haven't moved a lot so it's important to keep the muscles strong you know walking is great gives you you know that helps your um, your kidney energy to walk through space I believe it's kidney or liver energy to walk through space However, if the muscles are not getting strong when you walk, they're, always, they're pretty straight. Here, we're teaching the muscles to keep their connection to their strength. So, you're going to stretch your legs out, and a lot of my students know that if you take your mat up a little bit, and you're on your hardwood floor or your carpeting, it'll be a little easier. So, I'll do that. 
So the hands behind you for the first round, we're going to just exhale, slide the right foot back. Now make sure your foot's even. You're moving from the hip flexor. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it back. Try to keep the knee in alignment. So what I mean by that is, don't let your knee go out to the side. So if you can keep the knee in alignment with the hip. Exhale, sit up tall. You should start to feel the muscle. As you exhale, inhale, lengthen, really push through the heel. Exhale. And do you notice how I'm going slow and gentle? But I'm feeling my muscles engage. Very important. So, let's do the left side. Stretching the legs out. Both legs out. Exhale. Inhale. Sit up tall. Exhale. Inhale. Keep the foot, if your foot turns out, you want to make sure it stays straight. Again, just like you're walking on the floor. So it would be straight, not turned sideways. Okay? So continue that for a few rounds. And feel, notice what you feel. When you connect to what you feel in the body, it gives you a greater insight into feeling what you feel emotionally. and release. So now what I'm going to do is the full range of this movement. I'm good with this out here. And what we do, um, that's, that's for people who are having a hard time, their muscles are weak, I like to do that, especially if I work with private clients, that's something I give them to do first. Now the second move, the, the true movement is sitting tall, Taking hold of the ankle and bringing the leg back as you exhale. Inhale, keep the leg elevated, push through the heel. Exhale, take it back, sit up tall. Inhale, lengthen. Flex the heel. Don't point the toes, flex the heel. Exhale. So we're doing the right leg first. Sitting tall, pull yourself in. Now you're not holding your knee, you're holding the ankle. Sit up on the top of your sit bones. You don't want to be into your back. You, you won't feel the hip flexor as much. When you're sitting tall on the front edge of your sit bones, that's when you're properly aligned. And that's what structural yoga therapy is about. So this is a structural yoga class. Sitting tall and release. Take the other leg. Exhale, sitting tall. Inhale, lengthen, stay with your breath. See if you can start and end the movement with the breath. Nice full deep breaths. And release when you're ready. Maybe do two more so we're even on both sides. Notice you're feeling your hip flexor, your knee is relaxed. Remember, do only what's comfortable in my classes. I know I say it constantly, but that's because I really mean it. And I see people sometimes going beyond their comfort zone. So you want to inhale, exhale, and release. Good. So we're going to come on to, we're going to separate our legs. So this one's always challenging for people. And, um, I always used to say, the practices I always hate the most are the practices that I need the most. So I recommend a smoother surface for this. It'll really help you all with um, moving easily. So I will show you. So you're going to have your hands behind you and your legs are wide, as wide as you can make them. So what we're going to do, we're going to lift the left hip up off the floor. So I'm totally off the floor. I'm going to take the hands inside my left hip flexor. I'm going to turn this left foot towards the floor. Now when we turn the foot, it's rotating your hip. So here we are rotating the hip, not just the ankle. Now the knee doesn't rotate. The ankle and the hips rotate. So we are working on strengthening the inner thigh and the outer thigh. 
as we move in this position to the center, we're strengthening the inner thigh. So keep the leg straight and drag it forward towards the opposite leg. Then drop your sit bone, turn the left foot out, keep the leg straight. Now don't point your toes, stop pointing your toes. And draw the heel out, lift the hip up, turn the toes in, exhaling, drop, inhale, out, exhale, drop, inhale, keep the legs straight, move from your hip, you'll feel this up here, if your hips are tight, this is going to help to strengthen them. Tight hips equals weak hips. Drop, turn it out. Lift, turn it in. Exhale, inhale, and release. That's a really challenging one. Yes, I know. Who would have thunk? Really easy on the slippery kitchen floor. So, and it's also easy on a hardwood floor or if you have socks on. Um, but remember, always relax your knee because we don't want to move from the knee and the leg is straight. We're going to do the other side. So you're going to lift the right hip up off the floor, off the floor, and turn the foot in. And you're going to notice one side's easier than the other. Now this other foot leg is, is perpendicular. That means feet straight up. So you're going to exhale. Inhale. Lift. Turn. Exhale, drop, turn, inhale. Continue at your own pace. Nice deep breaths. Keep the knees straight so don't pull from your knee. The movement comes from your hip. Turn it out as far as you can. That shows you how far your hip rotates. Do not go beyond your comfortable movement. Go only out as far as you're comfortable and release. Good. So just a little release. Let's bring the feet together before we move into our next movement, which is cat and cow. So forward hinge. How do those hip flexors feel? Are you aware of them? Perfect. Never overdo it. Very gently inhale. Come on up. Come on to all fours. So we're going to do cat and cow, and today we are not going to use blocks. My teacher never wanted us to use props. I use them um, in the world I work in and live in. Uh, people need to uh, sometimes use a prop. So if you can avoid it, that's fine. But if you need to, please do <coughs> Excuse me. what's comfortable for you. So, come on to all fours. And a lot of you know me in classes. I teach this all the time, and I teach it in this way. We undulate the spine. We start at the bottom and work our way to the base of the skull, the top of the cervical vertebra, in both movements. So, tops of the feet press. Press your knees down. Push away at the floor. Don't lean into your shoulders. Arms, see how my arms are at an angle and my fingers are spread wide. You're going to lift the lower, middle, and upper back. Look back at the knees. And then you're going to drop the abdomen, rib cage, upper chest, shoulders back, gaze up. Press the knees and the tops of the feet down and the shoulders back as you inhale. And then exhale, lift lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, look back at your knees, tuck the tummy, press the knees, push away at the floor. My arms are straight. Look how far away from my ears my arms are. Move your, uh, relax your arms a little if you need to. Dropping abdomen, rib cage, upper chest, shoulders back, gaze up, feel the length through your front body, really draw those shoulders back. And exhale, lifting lower, middle, and upper back. Tuck the tummy, lift the pelvic floor with your exhales, and continue now at your own pace. 
I'm going to continue giving instructions, but start your movement when the breath begins and finish the movement when the breath ends. That's a little more advanced practice. It sounds pretty simple until you start trying to do it. Move as slowly as you can with the rhythm of your breath. at the end of your next exhale, come back into a child's pose and take a breath or two. Sit up tall before we do the next movement. So the movements are very simple, but they're very profound. They're very profound and you really want to be mindful you're going to get more benefit being more mindful than you are um, just doing a rote movement. And that's what um, I was talking about this gentleman I watched earlier. That's what he was saying yesterday. Some people are just, you know, we're doing this. There, there's no mindfulness there. Your body could injure itself. Your body could not be properly aligned. You could misalign yourself. And you could be using all your... Uh, joints and we want to strengthen muscles as we get older we need to strengthen our muscles still you know the muscle uh, tone goes away a lot faster so the next movement we're going to do is chakra vakasana and that strengthens the core so in this practice we're going to strengthen the hip flexors and you'll tuck the tummy so the movement is this where am i so I like to have the arms at an angle. And one thing that's really important is when we bring the knee towards our nose, we push ourselves back. It's not this movement. Do you, look how uncomfortable this looks. It feels worse. And so as we push back, we're using the hip flexors. I'm actually lifting my hip flexor with the strength of the muscle towards my nose. Now I don't expect you all to get your knees towards your nose. However, Feel yourself bringing the knee upward as you round the back. The strengthening of this muscle is going to safely stretch the antagonist muscle, which is in the back. So if you haven't learned a lot about your muscles, whatever you do, see a lot of people here in my classes, and you're going to learn. I mean, you should be aware of what you're doing, not just all like, oh, just let me relax, which is fine, but you should be mindful and safe with your body. So take the right leg back, you're going to inhale, you can either point the toes or flex the foot, and you're going to slowly bring the knee towards the nose as you exhale, inhale, lengthen, look forward, shoulders back, open the heart, strengthening your glutes and your hamstrings while you're in this position, and then exhale, strengthening the hip flexor. Continue now at your own pace. Inhale, lengthening. Feel the muscles in this position, glutes and hamstrings, and feel the core in this position. It's not where you want to go, it's where you are. Be comfortable. Make sure you're pushing back so you're using your core muscles. And release. Take the other leg back. Lengthen. Nice deep breaths. Turn around. One side is going to be easier than the other, as I've said earlier. Here we go. And exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, lengthen. Engage the glutes and hamstrings. Make sure you're not rocking to the side. Keep your hips level. So what I mean by that is this. What I mean by that is this. When you're coming forward, you don't want to push out to the side. You want to keep the leg even as you bring the knee to the nose. Adjust your hands. I find sometimes if I adjust my hands forward, it gives me a little different range of motion, but shoulders go back. So find what's comfortable for you and do that.
Two more rounds. Nice deep breaths. Relax your shoulders. It's not in your shoulders. It's in your core. Somebody's grunting. I hear it out there. Smooth, even breath. And release. Take another child's pose. So as you're in child's pose, because I know some of you this is new and some of you this is not, but it is a very challenging pose movement, no matter what level you're at. Like I find this challenging at my level. So we all work at our level. And when we feel a little bit challenged, we're strengthening our muscles. We're stretching the opposing muscle, right? We strengthen this, we stretch this, this happens automatically. Now when this muscle is engaged, we were doing the hip flexors, these are safely stretched. So when, for instance, you bend over, say I'm in a forward bend, I engage these muscles to come forward, I'm not going to overstretch my back because these are safely engaged to avoid overstretching the opposing muscle. Yay! So the next movement we're going to do, i got to lift the camera up a little bit. Just a little. This is for the hips. Now, I always, always found this challenging. So you're going to be on your knees. Onto all fours. Okay? So from the side, it'll look like this. Your hands are going to be wider than your mat. That's important. So I have the heels of my hands on my mat. Now, the knees are directly under the hips. And now what we're going to do is we're going to keep hugging the inner thighs. This is for your adductors, your inner thigh muscles. These strengthen and these will stretch. These are your abductors. Now when we go to the right, we're going to press down the right and left knee. And what you'll be doing is engaging the inner right thigh, stretching the outer right hip. Inhale through center, exhale to the opposite side. Look, I'm making small movements. I'm not swirling my hips forward. Here you see them swirl. No, we're just going in a straight line, moving just the hips. So you're pressing down the right knee as you go to the left and press down the left knee as you go to the right. Nice deep breaths. And again, it's lateral. I will show you this way. It's lateral, straight over. It's not scooping forward. Press the hip, keep them in line. There's hardly any weight on your hands. This is a nice hip stretch and strength at the same time. That's what we're learning today, to stretch and to strengthen. And come to center. Separate your knees wide as you're comfortable and come into a wide knee child's pose. So take your time. Take some nice deep breaths. And slowly come on up. So the next poses we do on our knees. Now a lot of you are very uncomfortable on the knees and as we um, we adapt to the individual you can sit however you'd like. Now if you're comfortable like so I'm gonna use a pillow we sit like this. And when we sit in Vajrasana, this is where our heels go. We take the heels and they go right under the sit bones. So we're sitting right on our heels. Hi. Now if that's not comfortable for you, and that's not always comfortable for most people, you can take a pillow and put it between the heels and the tops of your feet. Okay. If that's still not comfortable, listen to your body and sit comfortable and cross-legged. Okay? Or stretch your legs out. Do whatever you need to do to be comfortable. So I'm going to actually have this under my knees. Sit 
sitting in Vajrasana. And you do what's comfortable for you. And we're going to take the arms wider than the shoulders. They're going to be in line with around the chest. You don't want to have anything higher. And you're going to inhale, lift the wrists, spread the fingers. Elbows are straight. And exhale, turn the wrist down. Inhale up. Exhale, make a fist, curl it down slowly with control. So continue at your own pace as I explain to you that you're strengthening the wrists uh, the muscles of the forearm on the top as you come up and that you're strengthening the muscles underneath as you come down which means you should feel a gentle stretch here so inhaling exhaling move slowly with your breath look at your elbows are they straight nice deep breaths what are you feeling Tuck the tummy at the end of your exhales. You notice my right arm doesn't do what my left arm does. I use it a lot, so I really have to pay attention and go a little slower and feel the safe, comfortable stretch. Now, come on to center. That's a very challenging one. Not as challenging as what one of the next hand movements we're gonna do, but. So the next one we're gonna do, this one is pretty simple. We want to keep, I'm going to have my hands down, but you want to have the arms parallel to the floor. You don't want to have your hand higher. You want elbow and palm parallel. Fingers are together, thumbs are wide, and you're just, I'm going to stand up and show you. So you're going to exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale without moving your arms. Do you see how my arms are away from my body, right? You can see daylight through them. You don't want to do this. This means you are not using the free range of motion in your wrist. You're locking your shoulders, your elbows, and that's not the alignment we're looking for. So you're inhaling, exhaling. Watch what you're doing. Palms are soft and release. Turn the palms down. Same thing. Fingers are together. Thumbs are wide and arms are away from the body. You're going to exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. So move as slow as you can. You're actually strengthening your wrist, strengthening your wrist muscles. If you're on computers, oh yeah, nobody's on a computer these days, hello. So if you're on a computer or you paint, I paint, this really helps me keeping the flexibility within my, and range of motion, within my wrists. You know, carpal tunnel does not come from your wrists, it comes from your neck. So that's why you wanna relax the shoulders. We're not like this, we're relaxed. Shoulders are back and down and release. So this is always my favorite one to teach everybody because it's really pretty challenging. And um, as you come through it, um, you'll see. So we wanna circle just the wrists. Now. A lot of times my students move, see how the whole arm is moving? So I'm gonna show you from this angle. You're just gonna move, circle the wrist up, back, and around. Do you see how my forearm is staying still? I take it up and back as far as I did this way before. And then when I come down, I take it down as far as I did before. So it's a full range of motion. Now move slowly and gently, but feel the muscles. So you're doing both hands, so out and around. Look at your forearms, are they moving? If you have a watch on, that's gonna tell you a lot, but I never practice with any jewelry. I actually don't wear watches. They, they kind of stop and go backwards on me, so I stopped wearing them years ago. They never kept correct time. And go in and around. Now watch, are the forearms moving? I know somebody's out there saying, this movement is always so challenging to me, and I know exactly who's saying it right now. Breathe, move slow, and release, good. So the next movement we're gonna do strengthens our biceps. I've used those as prime examples through this practice. 
So arms are wider than the shoulders. When we're like this, look, we lock our arms. There's a whole story I tell about carrying angles when I work with classes and clients, and I take two or three hours to do this practice. We're moving through it very safely and simply today. There's a lot more alignment involved, so just move safely and notice what you feel. So arms are wider than the shoulders. So you're gonna make a fist and gently squeeze the bicep, which means in turn you're strengthening this without even thinking about it. Inhale, exhale. Keep the arms away from the body, it's not this, right? This is hugging using joints. Exhaling, inhaling. Exhaling, this is good too, carpal tunnel syndrome. We're working the lines that move up to the neck and shoulders. And release, good. Hands to the shoulders. We're gonna strengthen our pectoral muscles and the upper back muscles. We're gonna relax these neck muscles, these upper trapezius, oh, give them a break. Okay, so hands to the shoulders. Now, if you can't take your hands to the shoulders, do the best you can. And you're going to gently engage the upper chest muscles. And then as you come back, squeeze the upper back muscles. We don't want to touch. All I did was rotate my shoulders. We want to engage the pectoral muscles and engage the muscles that support the scapula and your arms in the back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Feel the muscles. The movement is slow. They may be simple, but they are not easy movements. When you become very mindful and watch what you feel, watch how you control the movement. You control the movement. Just like in meditation, we do meditation to learn how to control the mind and our thoughts. We watch, we see what our thoughts are, and then we let them go. That's how we control them, we let them go. Because we are not our thoughts. And come to center. So the next movement, the cactus arms, and we're just gonna gently rotate the arm in the socket. So I'm just moving, I'm rotating here. I'm not lifting my shoulders. So you're gonna exhale down and let the movement come from the arm. I do this with students. Is the arm doing the move? It's not the elbow, it's not this. I haven't even rotated my arm, now my arm's rotated. So you wanna rotate in the shoulder girdle. Inhale, exhale. You'll feel that movement through here if you're doing it properly through the tricep muscles. And release. Good. So my tops of my feet are tired, so I'm going to listen to my own advice. And another thing that we do um, in structural yoga therapy, when we can no longer sit in the position I was in, we come up onto our knees. So I'll look back. And this next movement, also for the shoulders and arms. Get this up a little. So we come up on the knees and we're going to inhale, come on all the way up without lifting the shoulders. Fingers are together, thumbs wide. Exhale, come on down and back and draw them back, not up and back, down and back. So this is what it looks like from the side. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Here you're strengthening your front deltoid. And as you go back, you're strengthening the back deltoids. Fingers are together, arms are straight. My knees are hip distance and I'm pressing the tops of my feet in. I've moved to this position. If you're seated, that's fine. Breathe, arms are wider than your shoulders. Feel the muscles drawing the arms back. Feel the muscles lifting the arms up. So I'm feeling these muscles. And release, good. So the next movement, we come to comfortable cross-legged. 
Hands are under the knees. Again, if you need to sit up on a blanket or something, sit up on the blanket. So, you're going to exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, straighten the arms, press the knees down. Inhale, come on up. This is flexion and extension of your spine. Exhale, press it down. Inhale, come on all the way up, shoulders back, open the heart. Lift your spine upward as you reach through the crown of the head. Continue at your own comfortable pace. Inhaling up and exhale. And inhale, come on up everybody. So being mindful every time you do a cat and cow, we do them all the time. So the next movement we're going to, this is a challenging one I find to teach people sometimes because they're in their heads literally. We want to move from the waist. So as I have my arms out, My fingers don't move. I'm just going to hinge at the waist on the right, inhale through center, and hinge at the left. Do you see how I'm moving from the waist? What I'm doing is I'm squeezing gently my oblique muscles. The movement originates here in the obliques. I'm giving lateral stretch, extension, and flexion to the spinal column. So keep your spine long as you reach. My hands don't leave the floor. Sit bones stay grounded. And I feel a gentle squeeze on the waist on each side. Good, come on to center. So the next and final movements, the next movement is a twist. So you're gonna take the left hand to the right knee and take the right hand behind you as you exhale. Inhale, come to center with the hands on the knees. Exhale, turn to the left. Inhale through center. Stay with the rhythm of your breath. And the next time you inhale through center, stay there. So the final movements of the joint freeing series, we've gone through the whole series, these are the final movements, is we're going to gently lift the chin, show you sideways, and we're going to tuck the chin. Inhale, lift. We're not dropping the chin, we're not bending the neck. We're keeping the cervical spine long. I explained this in another video recently. So you're lengthening the cervical spine. Exhale, tucking the cervical spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale, tuck. The next movement, come to center when you're complete, everybody. And the final, move, final two movements, you're going to inhale through the center. Exhale, drop the right ear. You're feeling the strength on the right, stretch on the left, gentle, inhale, center. Exhale. Inhale, center, going slowly side to side. You're moving as you contract. If you go to the right, you contract the right side of the neck. You feel the gentle stretch. You're not gonna overstretch a tight muscle. I'm saying that because my muscle feels tight today. Never judge the body, just observe it. And come on to center. And the final movement for our series. Inhale, center, shoulders back, sit tall, exhale, turn to the right. Keep your chin parallel to the floor. Keep your head in alignment. Don't jut the chin forward. Keep the chin back so the 
Cervical spine's in alignment. Inhale through center. Exhale, turn to the left. Eyes are closed, awareness is within. And the next time you bring your head to center, Please slowly turn around, lie down on your mats for Shavasana. This powerful practice we experience today moves and frees all the joints in the body, allowing prana, energy, life force to move through us. So settling yourself down, get very comfortable. Have your eyes closed and your awareness within. You can stretch your arms and legs out wide if you'd like to, whatever you're comfortable with. And we're going to do a relaxation practice my teacher gave us from Swami Vivekananda, who was actually the first yogi to come to the United States. And yoga is not a physical practice only. It's about the yoga teachings, and that's what Swami Vivekananda brought, learning how to be aware, mindful, and meditate. So this is from Swami Vivekananda. Just ask the body to get very comfortable. The first thing is to make sure that you're comfortable. Then ask yourself to slow down your breathing. So just slowing down the breath. How do you slow down the breath? Just ask yourself, slow down the breath. Observe the thoughts and let them go. So first, making sure you're very, very comfortable. Second, slowing down the breath. And third, just watching the thoughts and letting them go, finding the space where your thoughts come in and making it narrow. So if they're coming in quickly, you narrow that space where thought comes in and slow them down, slowing down your thoughts. Notice any currents of sensation that you might feel as you relax the body, slow down your breath, and slow down your thoughts.
continue to allow yourself to surrender, relax, and go deeper. Again, notice any movements or currents of sensation that arise in pure stillness. So making sure you're very, very comfortable. Your breath is slowed down. It's almost inaudible to you right now. And observing and letting thoughts go. Now very slowly begin to deepen your breath. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, arms and legs. Give yourself a big stretch, a big stretch. Hug your knees and rock side to side if you'd like. And gently rolling over onto your right for a moment. Take a moment to notice whatever you notice. That's what yoga is, to deepen your awareness. And very gently from the right side, push yourself up into a seated position. Have your eyes closed for a moment. Bringing your palms together in front of your heart. We're gonna chant the sound of Om once together to end our practice. So, Expel all the air from your lungs. Take in a nice, full, deep inhale now. Om. I wish all of you peace and love, good health, lots and lots of happiness and lots of fun. So thank you for being here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This will be on YouTube later on today. And subscribe to my Art and Soul Facebook page. I'm so happy you are all here with me today. I have some new artwork up. I'll put it up. I didn't stand up, but that'll be up all week. So thank you so much for coming. Have a beautiful day. It's gorgeous out. So go outside and stretch your body, stretch your lungs, stretch your mind. And um, thank you so much for coming. Bye. See you all soon. Oh, I keep trying to press it. I'm not on my iPad. Forgot.